You just dropped some serious cash on your dream speakers, amp and sources, reputable brands, the specs are incredible, the reviews are glowing, and you sit down, you hit play, and the sound is disappointing. Bloated bass, muddied mids, soundstage all over the place, it's not your gear, it's most likely your room, but before you start tearing down walls or covering every surface with acoustic panels, let's ask the real question. Can active EQ or room correction actually fix bad room acoustics? Or is it just digital duct tape on a problem that's fundamentally broken? So let's dig in. What we need to fully understand is that the room is the biggest component in the hi-fi sound system. Your listening room is not neutral, not even close. It acts like a giant filter that colors every note your speakers produce. Most rooms introduce peaks and nulls boosted in canceled frequencies, especially in the bass region. Reflections off of walls, ceilings, floors, and furniture smear time and phase cues, collapsing your soundstage and making detail vanish. The truth, you're not just hearing your speakers. You're hearing your speakers plus your room. And that's where active EQ and room correction systems step in or try to. Active equalization and room correction are digital tools designed to compensate for a room's acoustic flaws. Popular systems include Dirac Live, Anthem, ARC, the Trino Optimizer, the Odyssey XT32, Room EQ Wizard, and the Mini DSP Combo. They all work similarly. A calibrated microphone measures test tones played through your speakers. The system maps out how your room is changing those sounds. It applies digital filters, EQ, phase shifts, impulse corrections to neutralize the changes at the listening position. They all claim to give you that flat frequency response, time lined wave fronts, and cleaner imaging. But does it actually work in practice? Let's break it down what room correction can and cannot do. What it can fix, low frequency peaks, like a boomy 50 hertz bump caused by boundary reinforcement. Modal ringing, where bass notes linger too long and blur detail. Small dips, if they're not due to phase cancellation. Phase alignment between subs and main speakers. Time alignment between speakers. Smoother tonality at the main listening position. Systems like Dirac, Live Bass Control, or Trinov even handle multiple subwoofers beautifully, turning a chaotic low end into tight controlled bass. What it cannot fix, deep nulls caused by destructive interference. You cannot EQ your way out of a hole that physics creates. Late reflections that muddy imaging and destroy soundstage depth reverberation or echo from hard, untreated surfaces. Multiple seating positions with wildly different frequency responses. EQ only fixes one spot unless you're using very advanced multi-seat algorithms. Think of it this way. Room correction is a tuner, not a miracle worker. It helps the speaker and the room work together, but it can't change the laws of acoustics. Let's say you're using a pair of floor standards in a medium-sized room with bare walls and a tile floor. Without correction, you might have a plus 10 dB hump at 60 hertz that overwhelms mid-range, a null at 110 hertz sucking the life out of kick drums, or reflections off a coffee table smearing vocals. With room correction like the room equalization wizard uh, and mini DSP, that 60 hertz hump is tamed, the bass tightens up, imaging improves, the mid-range sounds cleaner at the listening spot, but slide to the next seat or two, the magic disappears. That's why room correction is best used alongside physical acoustic treatment, not instead of it. Treat the room first, then correct what's left. Yes, a hybrid approach. Step one. Tame the physical room. Bass traps and corners, absorption at early or 
ref first reflection points. Rugs or diffusers to tame, slap or echo. Move your speakers and listening position for smoother modal behavior. Step 2. Use EQ as a final polish. Flatten low end peaks without overdoing it. Tighten timing and alignment. Customize the tonal balance to your preference. Used this way, room correction becomes a scalpel, not a sledgehammer. Now, something to remember is psychoacoustics matter as well. Here's something that's often overlooked. Your brain is the final EQ. We are incredibly adaptable to uneven frequency response, but very sensitive to things like excessive bass ringing, smearing of transient detail, confused center stage from phase issues. Modern room correction tools, especially ones that fix time domain problems, improve those subtle qualities that make a system sound real. That's why the best systems don't aim for textbook flatness. They target perceptual balance, what actually sounds good to the human ears. So a few takeaways here. Can EQ or room correction fix a bad room? Yes, but with certain conditions. Boomy bass from room gain, proper EQ or room correction can be very effective. What about mid-range comb filtering from reflections? Only partially with limited success. Deep nulls from phase cancellations, not fixable with EQ alone. Poor imaging due to sidewall reflections, this needs physical acoustic treatment. Misaligned subwoofer integration, room correction will give you excellent results. How about if you have multiple listening positions? Yes, it can, but only without largely different frequency responses and only if you're using advanced systems. So if your speakers sound lifeless or overly harsh, don't rush to upgrade your gear. Start with a smart speaker placement system. Check this video for easy to follow tips on that. Treat the worst reflection points. This video here can help you strategically sound treat your room for the best and fastest results. Then bring in room correction to clean up the rest. And remember, your room might be the weakest link, but also your easiest and greatest opportunity.